of a solution to back problem. What you don't use, you lose. If you don't exercise, muscles and ligaments become weak and fail to hold your body in its proper alignment. Now we aren't saying going out and working out with 500 pound barbells. Uh, there's a very famous uh, medical doctor who wrote a book, Low Back Syndrome. He notes that mild exercise such as walking or swimming 20 minutes a day can help eliminate and prevent certain forms of back pain. Since every person is different, your exercise program should be determined by a doctor familiar with different forms of exercise. The three best exercises for low back pain and sciatica in general, and this is, this is a generalization, uh, but really you need to have like more specific things, just, just like uh, Mr. Kumar. Kurma. 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 I'm sorry. So Mr. Kerma had he went to a physical therapist and he got exercises that were specific for what he needed. So the first one that's good for most backs is crawling. It's kind of odd. You may, but we all started out on all fours. Almost everyone. Almost everyone crawled before they walked. There's a few people who sat and they just started walking. <laughs> I mean, I, haven't, I don't think I've ever seen that, but I know that there are some children who like, they sit and they just stand and they never crawl in between. Right. Um, so crawling is one of the exercises that's good for the back. I mean, how do you get down your your? This exercise built up the back without straining it, because because you don't have weight bearing down, you're actually supporting it on your all fours. Mm -hmm. So you crawl around on your hands and knees for ten to fifteen minutes, and you make sure no children jump on you. <laughs> so this is you know here's an example, someone crawling. Hip rolling. This exercise will be done by lying on your back with your knees bent, arms to side. Roll and touch your knees to your hand. This can be done for several minutes side to side. So here's should be a picture of that. And then there's the cat and camel. So uh, you get down on all fours and drop your abdomen and then arch your back. And you do it very slowly. So I think I mentioned how if you're leaning forward and leaning backwards, you're using the muscles in the front of the back and the back of the back. So this is this is doing that, but in a more neutral position with not weight bearing. So here, here's the, the arching and here's the turning on. This is what they do in the yoga classes. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this is working various muscle groups too. There are some that are more complicated than this, but these are just good basic ones that so, do you remember what the, which ones they are? Holding, um, hip rolling, arch. Cat and camel. And camel. Yeah. And camel. Yeah. yeah, cats are stiff ass, but camels also stick it out like that. Okay, again, your exercises should be only done with your doctor knowing your specific needs. And stop if it causes pain. Pretty simple rules, but very effective. And so what can you do to eliminate back pain? Those are things that you can do to help prevent and to reduce it. There are four common remedies that are used, drugs, surgery, exercise, or according to the latest research, acupuncture, acupressure, trigger point therapy, and NRCT. And I'll describe those a little bit. So let's look at medications first. So NSAIDs, which are the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications. Okay. Um, in addition to killing pain, they can also cause gastrointestinal hemorrhage, as bleeding in the, in the stomach and intestines, hepatitis, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. For example, Celebrex uh, has caused acute pancreatitis, which can be fatal. Their use can also lead to infertility and increased clotting in the blood, which can increase the risk of heart attacks and strokes. Uh, I think it's ibuprofen. If you take eight grams of ibuprofen, you'll kill yourself. And 800 is like the maximum recommended amount. So 10 times the dose will kill you by, by uh, kidney failure and hepatitis. So, so you have to be careful with some of them that you don't overdose. And there are people who have overdosed. Often surgery is considered after medication has failed. This is a standard way of operating. Uh, however, surgery, if possible, should be postponed until nutrition, exercise, and other safe alternative treatments have been tried. And most people consider that to be kind of common sense. And surgery itself does not necessarily guarantee an end to the pain. 
Um, Callahan and Sid, Sid Hewley state that over 70% of those who have had surgery for low back pain still report pain four to 17 years after surgery. So some of the studies do show that you know there's a high rate of failure with back surgery. If you absolutely need it, then sometimes it can be a godsend. But sometimes it just you know. And if you do go to a surgeon and ask about surgery, and they recommend it, those and you say, oh, is it going to be 100%? What am I? They'll tell you, no. You know, there's no guarantee that it's, it will necessarily do what. Need. And your friend has had surgeries and all kinds of things. I I I just had a discussion with him. And yeah. Just didn't, didn't get around to right. being able to be here tonight. So I just going to pass some stuff. Oh, oh. So um, there was a study by the National Spine Network to uh, determine the health of patients after surgery versus patients who had had no surgery. And they reviewed more than 18,000 patients with back pain who were entered in the database from January 98 to April 2000. Of those patients, 3,632 had a history of low back surgery. Results show the patients with a history of lumbar spine surgery, and again, lumbar spine is this area here, the lowest, lowest uh, five vertebra. Um, with that surgery, they fared significantly worse in areas such as physical functioning, general health, and mental health, compared to those patients with no prior history of spine surgery. Previous back surgery is associated with significantly worse general health status than those without surgery among patients with low back pain. That was the conclusion of that study. Um, 